Okay, so good morning, everybody, and welcome to this webinar for FX Street. Um, I'd first of all like to start off for, um, for by apologizing for last week. For any of you guys that were on the call last week, I had an absolute crisis at home and just absolutely forgot. Um, so apologies for that, but we're here now, and this should be a very, very good session. Today, we're going to talk about price action trading, entries and exits, so how you can get into and out of the markets. Um, using price action, which is very, very important. It's one of the primary ways that we went about trading until obviously we started trading with the range bars, but this was how we made our, our profits early on in our careers. So we're going to talk you through that, talk you through some of the, the different options that you have available to you. Now, you don't have to take any of them. What we're trying to do here is just give you more tools for your trading arsenal. Okay, that's ultimately what we're doing in all of these webinars. So we give you some ideas, you can then take them away and decide for yourself whether or not it's right for you, um, whether you can fit it into your particular trading regime or, you know, if it makes no sense, that's perfectly fine too. Okay. So before we move any further though, we just need to get the, the normal disclaimer stuff out of the way. And that has to say that the content of this webinar is not for investment advice and it's used purely for educational purposes only. And ultimately, all of the everybody here watching today, you still need to seek your own counsel. You need to go away and make your own decisions, okay, because spread betting or FX trading carries a high level of risk. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, let's move on. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Alex Song. I'm the co-founder of a website called Traders Corner, www.traderscorner-online.com. I've been trading the FX market. I've traded my brother since uh, 2005, so that's going on, what, nearly nine years now, eight, nine years. Uh, we've co-authored a number of articles for both FX Street and a number of other people. We've also created... Uh, different manuals, video courses, all of that kind of good stuff. So ultimately, you know, we're traders first, but we also do enjoy contributing to our little financial community of retail traders out there. And that's how we do that. You can find us on Facebook, which is Facebook forward slash Traders Corner online, or you can follow me on Twitter if you like. All right. So let's have a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about our our system, our price action system, entries and exits, as I said to you just now. So what is the system? Well, the way that we trade, we trade a swing trading system. OK, so we take trade in the direction of the trend. We don't try and ride the trend forever and ever and ever. That's not something that, that we like doing. And the reason for that is... Trend followers, although they're highly successful, they take they have or they have a very very bad win loss ratio. So they may be right, let's say I don't know, 30% of the time, 40% of the time, but those 30 or 40% of the time more than makes up for the rest of the time that they're wrong. However, for us, that's not the style of trading that we like. We prefer to, um, we prefer to be right more sort of 60, 70, 80 percent of the time, even if it means we're taking less out of the market. So all of the systems that we teach are swing trading systems, are systems that suit our personality. And the reason for that is obviously we wouldn't teach you guys something that we're not willing to do ourselves or something that we don't trade ourselves. And ultimately, we fundamentally believe in swing trading. Um, hence, all of the systems that you'll see from us and all of the approaches and methodologies are of that sort of vein. OK, so it's trading in the direction of the major trend. We're entering on the pullbacks. All right. So as I just said, we're not looking to take um, massive, massive chunks of the trend. We're just looking to enter when the market starts to pull back, when it starts to consolidate a little bit. And then when it gets ready to move in the direction of the trend, that's when we're we're looking to enter. We only take the best setups. And as you get more experience in trading, you'll understand this sentence a little bit better. But ultimately. All the setups in the markets are not created equal, right? So you will have trending markets, you will have pullbacks, but you will find that there are trending markets which are more harmonic, where everything seems to make more sense. We don't like to trade in the middle of consolidation. So even if, even if we've got a strong trend and then we get a pullback, but the pullback starts to turn a little bit choppy and starts to turn into consolidation, we prefer not to trade that. And the reason that we prefer not to trade that is that we feel like our edge is gone. OK, we like trading in harmonic markets because we can 
we have a better idea of what's going to happen next. Obviously, we can't say for sure, but it gives us a better idea. If we're trading in a consolidating market, we feel like that edge is completely out the window, so there's no point. And more, most importantly, what we're trading here can be applied on any time frame, any chart, um, any instrument, anywhere. This, this particular system, this approach to trading is based on price action. And if it's based on price action, as long as you have a chart that moves somewhere, then ultimately you can trade it. So if you want to apply this to FX, wonderful. If you want to apply it to, uh, you know, equities, commodities, no problem. You can do that on all of these. Is everybody okay so far with that? Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? Okay. So, identifying the opportunity. Everything starts with that. Yep, it can apply to futures as well, Bob. Everything. Yeah, future choosers. <laughs> um, okay, identifying the opportunity. This is where everything begins, right? So what we're looking for is that we're looking for a trending market with harmonic swings. That means that for the most part, not all of them, but for the most part, if we're in an uptrend, every swing to the upside is breaking out to a new high. If we're in a downtrend, every swing to the downside or more or less every swing to the downside is making a lower low and the price action looks harmonic. And I'll show you what, what I mean by that in a second. We're looking for levels of support or resistance that can potentially provide an entry point. Right now, these support and resistance levels could be horizontal lines of support and resistance. They could be Fibonacci levels. They can be trend lines. They could be moving averages, okay, if they're dynamic levels of support or resistance. But ultimately, the, what's important about trading is the location. You need to understand where you're trading. The reason that a lot of people fail is that they start trading in the middle of nowhere. So they don't have any reason to take the trade other than they have a signal to enter. Now, unfortunately, the signal to enter isn't quite good enough. You need to be taking the trade from a predefined level of support or resistance because then you know that that's a, that's a level that the rest of the market are looking at, which then makes a higher probability setup. Does that make sense? Do you guys follow that? So there are, there are many different ways to enter from a price action perspective, and we're going to talk about four in this particular webinar. The four ways to enter uh, something called a one, two, three reversal, which is one of my personal favorites. You can use candlestick patterns, um, and we're not going to, this isn't an encyclopedia to candlestick patterns. We're not going to go through all of Steve Nissen's work and all of that. We'll just talk about the few that make sense to us. Counter trend line breaks. So you all know what a trend line is. A counter trend line is a trend line of the pullback, okay, of the price acceptance, but we'll show you that in a minute. Or you could use a combination of all of those or, you know, kind of chop and change and add a few together. But we'll go through all of that as we continue through this webinar. So we'll start off by talking about a one, two, three reversal. Now, who here has heard about a one, two, three reversal? Anyone? Or ABC reversal? Maybe. <laughs> Oh, the suspense is killing me. Um, okay, so one, two, three reversal. There's a couple of things that we need to know before I actually show you the one, two, three reversal. Generally, we trade by, we trade from two charts, okay? So you have a longer term chart, which identifies the trend and your support and resistance points where you want to enter. The long, I'll repeat that, the longer term chart is used to identify the trend and to identify where you would like to enter in the trend. So the support and resistance level that we just talked about just now should be identified on the longer term chart. So for example, my longer term chart may be the, could be the daily chart. It could be the four hour chart. It really doesn't matter because then what we do, once you've found your longer term chart and you've defined the trend and you've defined your support and resistance levels and all of that kind of good stuff, you then jump down to a shorter term chart. And we like to go sort of like one order of magnitude lower. So, for example, if you're trading the daily chart, then the shorter term chart, the longer term chart for daily chart, then the shorter term chart would be the four hour chart, for example. Or if you were trading the four hour chart, 
um, then the shorter term chart for your entry would be the one hour chart. Does that make sense so far? So we're trading from two charts. The longer term chart is for identifying the trend and the support and the resistance levels. Then the shorter term chart is for identifying your actual entry price. It's for looking for the pattern. Right. And the pattern that we're looking at here, this um, we're specifically talking about the one, two, three reversals here. OK, we're not talking about candlestick patterns. This is just for the one, two, three reversal. So longer term chart, identifying the trend. So let's say a longer term chart is a daily chart. We find our trend on the daily chart. We look for our support and resistance levels on the daily chart. Then once we found the support and resistance levels and we're looking for an entry point, so we're trying to fine tune our entry point. We then jump down to the shorter term chart, which would be something like the four hour chart, for example. Um, and we look for the one, two, three reversal on the four hour chart. So what is the one, two, three reversal? Well, first of all, it's well known by a lot of market participants. A lot of people use this and I'll explain why in a second. It helps you to get into a move once the move has been confirmed. OK, and it allows you to see a reaction to a level. So there's a lot of people that kind of trade touches. So just as the price is approaching a level, they'll buy it just because it's approaching it. I personally could never do that because I feel like. I'm standing in front of a train and I just really don't want to stand in front of a train because more often than not, the train's going to win. Right. So one, two, three reversal allows you to get into a trade in the direction of the trend. OK, once it's been confirmed, you're not standing in front of a trade, a tra train, train, trade. I can't speak English. A train there. OK, so let's take a look at what this looks like and identify a one, two, three reversal. So here we have a dollar franc chart. OK, and this is a daily chart. When I say harmonic price action, harmonic swings, this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you look at this here, the market is coming down. It's swinging down nicely, swings back up, swings down. Didn't break the low, but that's fine because it's still harmonic. This isn't consolidation yet. Comes back up. Previous level of resistance there drops back down, breaks through, sells off from it. OK, sorry, I have a truck going past my window there. Um, so this is harmonic price action. As I said, the market swings down, comes back up, swings down again, comes back up. Does that make sense to you guys? So this is harmonic price action. The, the, you're left in, in kind of you're not guessing as to which way the trend is going. You don't know. You don't think this is consolidation. It's very clear for everyone that this is a trend. This is moving harmonically. That's what we want to see. So we identify that on a daily chart. OK, then what we would do and the level that we're actually looking at here, I've got this trend line in here, but that was because I was trading it down here. But previously, the, the opportunity we're looking at is this level here. OK, so on the daily chart, we come to our daily chart, we see that the market is moving down and trending nicely. It's broken through this very strong level of support. So support once, support twice again. It breaks through, treats it as resistance, comes back down and comes back and treats it as resistance again. OK, now this here, we're going to have an eye on this level and we're going to be saying, well, if the market comes back to this level, OK, if the market comes back there and it gives us a sort of a price action reversal, i.e. the one, two, three reversal, we are going to be looking to be getting in to the trend in the direction of the trend. So we're going to be looking to sell the market when the market gets back to this level. And we're going to use the one, two, three reversal to get in. So our longer term chart is the daily chart. OK, we're in on the daily chart now. Let's move forward. This is our entry. This level here, if I just pull back, is over here. This level that I'm looking at here, this is the price action at that level. So the market, this is the swing down. The market then starts to pull back to that level. We're now on the four hour chart, so I'm on the shorter term chart looking for my entry. The market comes back to that level, as you can see. This is point one. So why is it called a one, two, three reversal? Well, we have three points. So point one is the high. OK, it comes up and makes a high. Point two, it comes down and makes a low. Point three, this is the important part here. Point three cannot get above point one because what we're looking at what a one two three reversal is is a technical trend change all right so a trend is a series of higher highs and higher lows 
or lower highs and lower lows um, is for a downtrend. So high highs and high lows for an uptrend, lower highs and lower lows for a downtrend. That's how we define the trend. So a one, two, three reversal is a technical reversal of that trend. Okay. So what we get here is the market is coming up. So on the daily time frame, we have a big downtrend. On the four hour time frame, we have a bit of a pullback. And the pullback, the pullback, the pullback, looks like a little bit of a mini trend there. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a reversal of this mini trend. So the market starts to pull back. It comes back to that level, point one, comes down at point two there. Point three fails to get above point one. Then the market starts to sell off. And our entry point is when the market breaks below point two. Because what happens here? What's important about this? What do we have? We've got a high. We've got a low. We've got a lower high, a lower high. So what do we have when the market breaks point two? Anybody want to take a guess? Lower high. Anyone? Lower, lower. No one? Okay. Lower low. Yes, exactly. We have a lower low. So we have a technical reversal there. Okay. So the market breaks now. We have a technical reversal. We get in there at the break of point two, and then we look to place our stop either above point three, if you're feeling a bit aggressive, you want a tight stop, or above point one, which is really where we prefer to, to put our stops. We prefer to give it a little bit more space to run um, because we believe that the market's at least going to get down to these lows here. And then you look for the market to trend down towards the lows and hopefully break below the lows. OK. I would sell the exact candle in I would sell from is this massive bearish candle here. When this bearish candle breaks point two, I would be in. Give it a couple of pips. So four or five pips and I would be in there. Four or five pips on a four hour chart, by the way. If you're trading like a one minute chart, then just a couple of pips should be enough. So is everybody happy, happy with that? <laughs> Indeed, as if by magic. OK, let's move on to another entry technique that you can use. The candlestick. Re oh, wait, question. Would you like look for such formations on tops or is it good in retracement of bigger trends? I try not to pick tops and bottoms, to be honest with you. I try not to use it to reverse a massive trend. I like it to reverse the pullback of a more dominant trend. Thank you, Owen. Okay, so moving on to the candlestick reversal. Now, when with the one, two, three reversals, we said we trade from two charts. With the candlestick reversal, however, we're only going to trade from one time frame. Okay? So you we're going to pay attention to one time frame and they're going to be the levels on the higher time frame. Now you can trade candlestick reversals on anything, so one hour, four hour, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I like trading candlestick reversal patterns on daily charts. That's just my personal preference, okay? So those of you who are trading full-time, uh, not full-time, who are trading with a nine-to-five job or something like that, this, this sort of trading here would be perfect, okay? Because you get to analyze the candles, the daily candles at the end of every day, and um, you can build up quite a nice little trading system using this. So the candlestick reversal patterns, again, they're well known by market participants. We aren't going to be, this isn't an encyclopedia to the different patterns. We're just showing you the ones that we use. It helps you to get in once the move has been confirmed. Again, you know, we like to see reactions to the levels. We, we really don't like taking those touch trades or those trades where the market's just approaching a level and you're like, yep, you know what? The market's approaching the level I'm going to buy. I really, really don't like doing that. I prefer to get into a trade once it's been confirmed. I, you know, that may just be me. I'm not saying you can't be successful trading the other way. It's just from my personal per, per, personal perspective. What is going on this morning? From my personal perspective, it's just not something I believe in. If I don't believe in it, then it's very difficult to trade it. So. Looking at these examples here, we've got one on the pound New Zealand. Now, this is sort of like a shooting star um, reversal pattern. Now, what, what's important with candlestick patterns, again, is that you need your support and resistance levels there. 
You can't just trade from the middle of the chart. If you're just trading from the middle of nowhere, that's where you start to get caught. That's where you start to get hurt. You need to be trading for a reason. Okay, so this sets up here, the shooting star. What we have is we've got some, it's a little bit, little bit of consolidation, but ultimately, ultimately the market is moving down. Okay, so the market's moving down. Um, the market pulls back. We've got a predefined level of support and resistance. If we look left on this chart here, it was also a big level previously as well. So you've got this level of support here. The market breaks through the level of support and comes back to that level of support. The market then moves, uh, messes about with that level. And what happens? This candle over here. Can you guys see it? This big sort of pin bar looking candle here. What's happened? is that the market's come to that level. It's messed about. So you've got a massive momentum candle here. This momentum candle has been stopped dead in its tracks at that level. The market's then messed about with some short body candle. Then the market has given us this candle. Now, remember, this is what's important about trading. You have to read the story of the market. At one point in time, this candle here looked very bullish. This candle was completely blue, okay? It was above this line here. It looked like the market was going to break above there and continue off to the upside. That's what it looked like. However, by the time it closed, look at where it closed. It closed down here towards the bottom of the candle. What does that tell us? That tells us that at one point the bulls made an attempt to get above the level. They didn't succeed. The, the sellers, the sellers are all of the people that were involved in this trade here. All of the people that made money there got involved and said, no, no. You're not going above this level. We want to continue selling. The bulls said, well, you know what? If they want to continue selling. Look at what happened last time. They won. We aren't quite ready to go to battle with them yet, so we're going to step aside. They get out of their position. The market closes down there. We would then look to enter on the break of the low of that candle. So we would enter on the break of that low there of this candle. So we'd be in on this candle here. We'd have our stop above the, the high of the candle there. And we'd look to trade it for at least one to one. So down to where my cursor is here and ideally a little bit more. So if you traded it down towards the lows there, you'd have a very, very healthy risk reward ratio of around a two to one there. And it's a, a very nice setup. So that's the shooting star. What other candlestick patterns do we have? We have a hammer reversal, which is basically the, the opposite of a shooting star, a hammer bottom. Again, the market is pushing up. As you can see here, the market is swinging to the upside. It breaks out of a very strong level of resistance over here. Once it broke through that level of resistance, it then pulled back to that level. What happened when it got back to that level? Look at the candle. Let's talk about the story again. What happens? The bears got involved in this candle here. They sold it all the way down to these lows. At one point in time, this candle was very bearish. Very, very bearish. At one point in time, it looked as if this level was going to be broken and the market was going to retrace all the way back down here like that. But what actually happened? The bulls, all of the people that were involved in this move here, this move here, all of those people got back involved. They bought the market back to the point where the, uh, the, the market closed at the top of the candle. And then we would be in on a break of the high of this candle so on, on the this candle over here, on a break of that high. We'd have our stop below the low of the candle. And again, we'd be looking to trade it for one to one. Now, what's important, what's common about what I've just shown you? Support and resistance. Support and resistance. Every single one of these trades that I've shown you so far has been from a predefined level of support and resistance. Not once have we taken a trade in the middle of a chart. We haven't taken a trade here, here, because there's no reason to. There's no reason to take a trade here. Here, it makes sense. You see what I mean? Do we trade off the four hour time frame or it's not? No, it's not relevant. I mean, as I said, I prefer to trade from longer term time frames when I'm trading uh, candlestick patterns, but you can trade it off of anything. So that's a hammer. What about a bearish engulfing candle? Look at this here. Pound New Zealand again. So this was the previous one that we got. The market broke through. Yep, you could use it on the 15 minute. It may not be as reliable, but you can definitely use it there. 
So the market gets below that level. This is the previous one that we were looking on the Pound New Zealand uh, a little while back. Gets below that level, breaks down, comes back to that level. What do we get at that level here? Look at this, a bearish engulfing candle. So it's a predefined level of support or resistance. Again, it was support here, resistance, comes back, treats as resistance again. We've got this sort of doji looking candle here. Then we get a bearish engulfing candle. Bearish engulfing candle is a candle that engulfs the entire body of the previous candle. That's exactly what we have here. That is a very, very bearish sign. So this level here, the market has gone, okay, I'm going to try and get up there. Nope, don't fancy it. I'm going to close all the way back below there. This is the first sign of intent from the market. This candle here is kind of like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. These candles here are, you know, saying, well, I'm going short, I'm going long, I'm going short, but there's no real direction. This candle here follows this previous one and it engulfs the entire previous candle. That's our first indication. Once the market then breaks below the low of this candle here, so common theme again, always taking a break for the candle. Once the market breaks the low of that candle, we are in. We have a stop above the highs up here, in above the low there, and we trade it for all we can get. Okay, now if you guys want to understand what the candlestick patterns are, um, you know, quick Google, there's a ton of information out there on the Internet. The candlestick patterns that we like to use primarily are the hammers, the shooting stars, the bearish and the bullish engulfing. They're pretty much the only ones that we trade. Okay. Uh, we enter on the break, not on the candle close. Uh, no, I don't really use Elliott Wave pan, pan on fire. Not really. You know, I, I, I have an appreciation for what it is, but, um, no, I, <laughs> I, I think it's too subjective. You know, you've got, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, ABC, one, two, three, four, five, ABCD, all of that kind of crud. And ultimately, it one can be, you know, you can have a one, two, three, four, five in the middle of another one. And it's just way too, you know, it's, it leaves too much up to the imagination from my personal perspective. I'm not saying it doesn't work. You know, one of the biggest fund managers in the world, Mr. Paul Tudor Jones, um, uh, allegedly uses that. But um, for me, I, it's just not something I can get involved in. I don't believe enough in it. But that's just me. Okay. Yeah, one, two, three is, is enough to mark that. As I said, that was our primary technique. So finally, for the candlestick reversals, the bullish engulfing candle. Now, the bullish engulfing is the opposite to the bearish. What do we need? A previous level of um, support or resistance being this guy here. So support, resistance. Market breaks through, treats it as support, comes away. And by the way, this was a big level. So if you look far back on your charts around the 87 level on the dollar yen, massive level. Market comes back to that level. What do we get? So the market kind of trickles down towards that level. No real intent there. The first candle with some serious intent is this bullish candle here. This candle engulfs the, pre the entire body of this candle over here. And that there is a very bullish sign. Now, remember in the FX market, you're not going to get gaps. So the, the open of the candle is always going to be around the close. Unless you're trading a candle on a Sunday night, you're not going to get it where it engulfs the entire candle. It's just not possible. But this is the FX version of it anyway. Engulfs that candle. You, you enter with your stop above the low. Enter on a break of this candle up here. And you ride that for everything that it can give you. Okay. This is the dollar yen four hour chart. Okay. So counter trend line break. Um, that's a typo. That shouldn't be one, two, three reversal. Forgive me. Read counter trend line break. So you only need to trade from one time frame, although it's, it's good to pay attention to the higher, to the levels on the higher time frames in any case, just to make sure you're not trading into uh, an area of trouble. As I said, this is a typo. This should not be one, two, three reversal. That should take counter trend line break. Um, but anyway, we move on. It allows us to get in a little bit earlier than the other methods. Okay, because we're not looking for specific price action confirmation. We're just looking to get into the into the trend in the direction of the trend at the earliest possible opportunity. Um, or, although having said that, it does say that the it does. We still do get confirmation, so we're still not just going to trade it because it's approaching a level. We're still looking for 
some confirmation. We're still looking for a reaction to the level. All right. Um, the the higher time frames, yeah, they're a little bit more reliable. There's a little less noise there. Okay. So the counter trend line break. Ultimately, what we're looking to do here is if you take a look at this chart, we're looking for a trending price action. So this was trending before this. The market, you're looking for swings to the upside followed by a pullback. Now, don't make the mistake that a lot of people make where they start drawing trend lines across two candles. You want a good kind of three, four, five candles to be able to put your trend line in. Um, you don't want to just be, you know, doing vertical trend lines. That makes no sense whatsoever. So the market pulls back a little bit. You put your trend line in there. And the idea is to enter on a break of the trend line. Now, the little trick that I have is that I enter on the break of a trend line, but I also look for a candle next to the trend line to the area where it's broken for me to wait for the higher of that candle to be broken. Because otherwise, what you can sometimes get is the candle, the market just moves sideways and it breaks the trend line because it's moving sideways. It hasn't really, um, it hasn't broken to a new high or anything like that. So the little trick that I have with this is that, yes, you look for the trend line break, but you also look for the candle next to it for the high to be broken or the low to be broken if you were in a downtrend. So you're looking for a trend to be in place, you're looking for a little bit of a pullback, the market pulls back, it breaks the trend line, it breaks the previous high of the candle, you're in. Again here, you get a little bit of a pullback, the market breaks the trend line, it breaks the high of this previous candle, and you are in. This here, there wasn't really a place to put a pullback. You maybe could have done a horizontal um, line there of resistance, but it wasn't something that we could look to enter. Again, you get a little bit of a pullback here. Um, you get some stalling action. The market breaks a trend line, breaks the high of the candle. You'd be in there. Um, same again. It's a very there, there's not a lot of a lot to talk about with regards to this method. This was one of the first methods that we used to trade the markets. By the way, one of the the very first ones. It's, it's a very very good method for entering the market, um, and it's very simple. There's not a lot to it, but you have to. The one thing with this method is that you have to be trading in a trending environment. Okay, you can't just trade in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so where do we place our stop losses? I've been talking about it as we go throughout, but we'll just have a quick recap. Generally, we place our stop losses behind the most logical level. So for a one, two, three reversal, you put it behind point one or point three. For the candlesticks, you put it behind the candle candle extreme. And for the counter trend line breaks, you place your stops behind the most recent swing points. I think that makes sense. Taking profits. Taking profits are a little bit more discretionary, okay? But generally, you're looking to exit before you before trouble areas. So you're looking to exit before you get to the next trouble spot, okay? And the the following principles are the ones that should be followed. You definitely want to exit part of your position before a previous swing at green. And I'm talking about this if it's like a really really strong level. Um, sometimes if they're weaker levels, you can just let the market trade through them. But if you're trading up to a very, very strong level, generally speaking, we like to take at least part of our position off the table and then lock in, then lock in the profits at break even or something like that. It just ensures that, um, you know, you're protecting your profits. It's ideal if the market doesn't need to make a new high or new low for you to be able to make money. Then what I mean by that is that you want to be taking trades where you have a decent pullback. You don't want to be taking trades that just kind of aren't really pulling back that much because a lot of the time the market needs more time for price acceptance. And what you'll find is that you'll get into a position and then the market will drop and stop you out. It's much better to get in after the market's had a bit more of a pullback because that tells you that there's been more price acceptance. Okay. And having a, um, a good risk reward is an absolute must. It's one of the most important targets. OK. Um, you, you really want to have a good risk reward. You don't want to be trading a negative risk reward because in the in the long run, that's going to kill you. A good risk reward is a minimum of one to one, ideally somewhere around a one and a half or a two to one. 
when you get better with your entries, the risk reward can come down. But having a good risk reward in the beginning allows you to make more mistakes. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so that wraps up our, our little webinar on price action entry. Do you guys have any questions at all? How have you found that? What's the best charting package? <laughs> I use NinjaTrader, or we use NinjaTrader. But you do have to pay for that. How to use a combination of the above? Um, I haven't got any here. Um, we can take a look at some markets. I'll put my chart and package up while I've been playing up. Um, but ultimately, Suleiman, um, let me try and get an example. Give me why? Okay, you might need to give me a second here, Kim. Oh, we're running out of time. Okay, I'll explain it, and then in another one, I'll give you some examples. Okay, because I don't want to run out of time here. Um, how you use a, um, a combination of them is ultimately you may look for, when I say a combination, I'm primarily looking, talking about a combination of like a one, two, three reversal and a counter trend line break or counter trend line break and a candlestick reversal. You kind of can't really use the one, two, three and the candlestick together. You choose one of those with the counter trend line break. Does that make sense? Excellent. Okay, do I trade the news? Yeah, I trade the news. I trade, I trade around the news. Uh, it's very, very volatile, and you have to be quick, and you have to know what you're going to do. You can't be thinking whilst you're in there. Best time frame, if you're just starting out, I would look at like a one hour or a four hour. Yeah, a combination of the previous three. But what I mean by that for the moment is a combination of uh, a one, two, three reversal and a counter trend line break or a combination of a candlestick reversal and a counter trend line break. Does that make sense? Giraffe, is that OK? No, no draft. I don't use it with the range bar strategies. Okay, people, how did you find that today? Is that something that you feel that you can use? Yes, Strav, as I said in the beginning, this is what we use before we have the range bars. But the range bars is what we use primarily now. Oops. Good stuff. I'm happy you did. What you guys need to do now is you need to go away and you need to practice it. Okay? You really need to practice. You need to kind of... Um, make it your own. Do you see what I mean? I've told you that it worked. Fantastic. But when you're in the heat of battle, if you don't know it worked, then you're going to lose faith and you're going to look for another system and that's generally what uh, rookie and losing traders do. Okay, so you really need to put the effort in and do your own back testing and understand for yourself that this system works. If I were trading a counter trend line vertical, but 
reversal, but got a candlestick reversal first, but I wait for their pants to line break. Um, yeah, you could do. That would give you additional confirmation, but you by no, you, you don't have to do that. Uh, Joe, our best way to contact us regarding our training, you can send us an email. If you send it to, I'll just type it in the box here. If you type it into support at traders, traderscorner-online.com. So support at traderscorner-online.com. That will... That, that my brother and I both picked that up, so you'll be able, you'll get a response pretty quickly there. We've actually just released our new video course, which is very cool. I'm very pleased with it. Our little baby, so proud of it. And that basically gives you everything, by the way. Sorry, shameless little plug there, but um, there we go. But honestly, <clears throat> that literally, that will take you, for, that gives you all of the strategies that we trade, um, what we do every day, um, webinars, all of that kind of good stuff is included there. So you might want to take a look at that as well. Okay, then, people. If that's it, if there are no other questions, what uh, link to it. Oops, okay, hold on. If you go to our website, it's on the front page for our website. So traderscorner-online.com, www.traderscorner-online.com, that will, um, you'll see it's on the, on the front there. Are there more advanced strategies? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret here, Pam. There, when we, there are advanced strategies, but they are all simple. Strategies in the FX market, the, sim the more simple they are, the better they are. So they're more advanced in the sense that we do a lot more explanation. So there's about, I don't know, there's about 50, 60 videos in there where we talk about each individual component of the system. So here we just talked about the entries and exits. What you'll see in the in the course is that you'll see that we talk about there will be a specific lesson on candlesticks. So why do we like them? What do we use them for? Et cetera, et cetera. There's a specific lesson on the counter trend line. There's a specific lesson on... Um, on range bars, a specific lesson on each individual component of our range bar strategy, then we put it all together. So what you're seeing here with these webinars and everything is we're kind of giving you a, a all meshed into one. Um, obviously, we haven't given all of the rules because that wouldn't be fair on the people that purchase the course. Um, but in the course, we we really break everything down. There's is live market trading. We don't we don't have a live trading room as of yet, draft, but there are live trades. So we record live videos um, and we'll be doing it at least a couple of times a week to show you the trades that we're taking live in the markets so you can see how we trade them. OK. OK, then, ladles and jelly spoons, I think that's our time is up. Um, so what we'll do is, oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, FX Street. And uh, we will see you on the next webinar. The next webinar is on the 16th. Is that right? FX Street, it's on the 16th of August. We will pick a good topic for you guys, and we will see you then. Okay, so thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all on the next webinar. Okay, take care now. Thank you, FX Street, for having, having me, and I will see you all soon.